Now that we've gone through most of the basics relating to vector, I want to start working on color. And we're going to focus on spot color in this getting started with the Corel Draw Graphics Suite X6 series because we're primarily targeted at garment printers and garment decorators, sign shops, and small businesses. And as I've said throughout the series, I don't want to get too in depth. I want to keep things simple and focus on the basic tools and the basic information you need to get started after this series of training tutorials in Corel Draw 6, creating your designs, setting up your colors, outputting your half tones, burning your screens, etc. The whole objective of this series is to just quick start you, to give you something to get started with, get a foundation under you, and then you can move into the more advanced training that we have on our site or through our training series or through the training series that we have with our plugins and products. The first thing I want to do is take a look at spot color and what it is. And I want to really kind of lay this out starting with some grayscales and getting a basic understanding of what halftones are. On the screen here I have some grayscales. Here I've got a CMYK grayscale built out in vector. And you can see I've got 100% K here. I've got 90%. I've got 80%. And it goes all the way down to zero, which is white. Here I've got the Pantone Natural Black C. Same thing, starting at 90, 80, 70, 60. And we can see that right down here in the status bar. Here I've got a blue, which is the 293C. And you can see that going right down through the grayscale here. And then next to it, I've got a monochrome bitmap that's been ripped to halftones. And you can see how these dots work. Now, the density of your dots will translate to the density of your ink or the tint of your ink. And you create the illusion of color spectrum with spot colors by working with density and halftones when you're screen printing. Down here where the dots are very small, it's going to look like a light blue. Now, understanding that, we're going to need to understand that when we're working in draw, we're primarily going to want to work with spot colors. And a palette that I go to typically is the Pantone Solid Coated. If you want to open that palette, you can go to Windows, Color Palettes, and you can come down here to Pantone Solid Coated, and that palette will open up. Now you'll notice that Draw puts a little symbol down in the corner of all the spot colors in the spot color palette, so you can so you can identify that this is a spot color. The other palette here is a CMYK color palette, and it will separate very differently than a spot color graphic will. Here on page two, I've got a couple of graphics set up. One is spot color and the other is CMYK. Down here at the bottom is my CMYK colors design. These actually came out of our spring sports pack in the design base. And you can see how this design would pop on a dark garment. I want to go ahead and hit control C. I'm going to go ahead and open a new document. I'm going to select OK. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control V and paste this in. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up my separations through Draw for CMYK. And we'll take a look at how CMYK color separations work. I'm going to go to Print. I'm going to go to Color. I'm going to go to Print Separations. I'm going to go to my Separations tab. And you'll see that I've got Cyan, Magenta, Yellow, and Black. If we tab through the preview of our separations, we'll see that what we're going to do is we're going to create a graphic that's going to be printed out and the dots are going to mix together to make the color. Also when you're working with CMYK you don't get a white and we know that very often in screen printing we're dealing with whites as colors. Go ahead to a print preview and take a closer look at this. What will be happening here is here is the cayenne here is the magenta, and you can see how that is really going to mix in. Here is the yellow, which is almost 100%, and then here is the black, which is going to mix in around the outline colors. Now, when you're dealing with spot colors, you're printing individual colors. I want to go ahead and hit cancel here. Go ahead and delete this. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go back to my training page. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to get my spot color design, which is a three color design. I'm going to left click and select this. I'm going to hit control C. 
and then I'm going to mi minimize this and I'm going to create a new page I'm going to select OK and then I'm going to go ahead and paste this in control V and I'll bring this down on my page and then we'll take a look at our separations preview and I'm just going to go ahead and go to print I'm going to go to color print separations I'll go to the separations tab and you can see here what I've got is red yellow and black all set up as spot colors but what's going to happen in my spot colors as we tab through here is here is I believe this would be the red perhaps it's the yellow let me take a look at the design that would have been the red yes and then this is the yellow we'll go to a print preview here and we're going to use some mixing of ink here in this design you can see that we're going to print this red and then we're going to print this yellow to create the highlight of the yellow in the flame and then we'll print our process black C as spot colors so we're down to three colors and everything's done as a spot color now this gets interesting as I said because in CMYK you can't support a white now if I was going to separate this and print it on a dark garment I would need an underbase there's not an option for that in Corel Draws printing so I would go to my advanced tools and simple seps I would go to my separation options in simple seps I would select generate underbase and then I would click on generate separations and we'll let that process and we'll take a look at what an underbase is because when we're working with our color separations for garment printing if we're going on dark garments like the gray we had this set up on the comp we're going to need a white base to print on top of and we're not going to get that option when we're printing through the output of Corel Draw separations and white bases are very important also if you've got a white highlight or a white in your design you'll need a second white so you want to print a white base your colors and then your second white or your white highlight now this is a very intense graphic with almost well over a thousand objects so it's going to take simple steps just a minute to process this I'll go ahead and pause and when this is finished processing we'll come back and we'll take a look at our color separation output in Corel Draw. Simple steps has finished processing my separations directly in Corel Draw. here I have my white bin, my white base set up on my underbase untinted page this would be the white ink that I would lay down on the t-shirt if I click here we have our what I would believe would be our red yes this is absolutely the red now this red would then be laid down on top of that white here we've got our black you'll notice that the black is knocked out of the white we don't underbase black because we don't want to have the white ink under our black black is very strong and you don't need a white base for it I want to go back here, I want to go back one more and here is our process yellow now what's going to happen is, is that where you see the gray scales in here, the shading and highlighting this will be translated into half tone dots and those dots will then be printed on top of or under the dots of the red and they'll blend together and create an orange go ahead and close simple steps and I'm going to minimize this and go back to the training page go back to page one and you can see that these will be the dots now I've got this set up as a monochrome bitmap but you can see how these dots would be locked over the red or printed over the red and you'd have red and yellow and that would create your flame look and we're working with densities of color now in this particular instance what I used was transparencies of spot color to create the illusion of the orange coming out of the red and the yellow to get the realistic flame look because we're limited on colors and this is only a three color design red yellow and black but yet by using the transparencies and there's some training series on the site that will show you how to do this in the upgrading to Corel Draw X6 training series so that you can create these types of looks and effects with spot colors but you can see how much depth is in this design and how much pop is in it and that's really where you want to go with your designs. You don't want to be just flat designs. Take a look at page three, and I've got a vehicle here set up. And if we want to print this 
as spot colors in CMYK, we've got 475 objects in here. And printing this as CMYK is going to be rather difficult, but yet we've got the same design set up as six spot colors. Go ahead and go to its simple steps here, and we'll create a palette. And it'll tell us that we have six colors and 24 tints in this design. So we could print this as a six color design. And we could also replace colors and bring it down. Perhaps we could replace the red with another color or something like that. Of course, we need a white base here also. I'm going to go ahead and move this over. And let's go down here to our CMYK design and click on that and select Create Palette. And we're going to see that we end up with 22 colors. Now you can see that by processing that through simple steps, I brought it down to six colors. And there's not a huge difference between the look of the two. The colors are almost identical, but we're using tints and solid colors to replace all the different colors that are in this design. Let's take a look at page four, and I want to show you a few things here relating to spot colors and design work. Here I've got a simple vector clip art set up that's a baseball player. And perhaps I want to give some color to this player. I'm going to go ahead and close this palette, and I'll go ahead and close this palette We'll keep this palette open. And let's say the colors of this team are blue. And we're going to take a red. And we're going to take a black. And of course, we'll be working with a white. I'm going to go and take these color chips. And I'm going to fill one with white, one with red, one with, let's say, a blue and another one with one of the Pantone blacks. I'll select everything. I'll right click here in the X and take the outline off. I'll go to Simple Steps and create a palette. Now what I want is I want a tinted palette from Simple Steps because that's going to give me a range or spectrum of spot colors that I can work with in my design. I'm going to change my increments to two and then I'm going to come here and click on Create Tinted Palette from Selected Colors. And now I have my palette dot tint. Go ahead and close simple steps. Now what I've got here is I've got a spectrum of the available spot colors I have based on tints or half tones or looks or illusions of color I can create with half tones, just like we had back here on page one. But this is a much larger spectrum of color because I changed my increments. Now if I want to, let's say, come here, I'm going to go ahead and click on ungroup all. Let's say I want to use the red to make a flesh color. And I guess I didn't want to do that. I want to hit Control Z. I believe I had all of the flesh objects selected there. Hit Control Z and go back. I'll grab a light density of red. Let's say a 23. Left click, drag, and release that here. And I'll have a flesh tone. Or what will look like a flesh tone against the white. Nice and light there from that red. Now, from that red, I could also come down and, let's say, fill his equipment or his gear. Now, with the blue, let's say he has a blue and gray uniform. I can come down here, even though all of this is grouped, I'm going to select Ungroup All. And we're going to make his uniform a different color. I'm going to go with the uniform. Let's say the pants will be like a gray. Now I just got everything here and that's not what I wanted to do. So I'm going to right click on this and select break curve apart. And then I'm going to come down here, select the gray area of this pants. I saw some objects in there that I'm going to want. And I'll go ahead and combine those back. And there were some other ones in here. I'm going to go to view and wireframe. And we can see that these objects here are what I want. So I'm going to select this gray and then just come through and lasso right through there. And then I'll combine and I'll go back to view and enhanced. And we've got this object for the pants and then we've got the shirt objects up here. So I'm going to take this pants and let's say these will be a blue. And drag that in there and now I've got a blue. Let's say that his helmet 
is a solid blue or a darker blue like a baseball helmet right there now you see I'm using this tint to match that color let's say that the glove is a gray because we don't have a brown with our spot color so we'll make that to a darker gray color left click and drag that over now here I've got the illusion of several different colors going on in this design as you can see here now if I wanted to break apart the shoes and fill those with a white I could do that but now I don't even actually have a white in my design anymore but I'm using tints of black for the glove and the shirt I'm creating a different color from the helmet to the pants using densities or tints of ink which all will translate translate back to half tones in my output another thing that we want to take a look at is I've got a wolf mascot here and if I take a look at him in simple steps I'll go to advanced tools simple steps create palette and I can see that I've got seven colors and 18 tints and I want to bring this down to three colors and I'm going to use tints of black and red and I'm going to use my white I'm going to click on one click conversion and I'm going to convert this down to three colors we just processed 58 objects and this was almost identical color matching but we're going to have dots here instead of solid color for the gray now I can see the simple steps replace the teeth with a red I'll go ahead and click on ungroup all and just lasso in here two simple steps just where the teeth are click on create palette I'm going to select these lighter reds that we have here and probably this one too I'm going to go to replace colors fills outlines I don't want preserved tint I'm going to go to replace you can see we got a new palette tint based on that conversion over here I'm going to come down here I'm going to go to my palettes I'm going to go to palette tint I'm going to select 100% Pantone Trans White, select OK, and now my teeth are re restored to white. And now my graphic is down to three colors and six tenths. So go ahead and close this, and now I could output this as a half tone separation, either through simple steps or through a rip in Corel. But you want to be working with spot colors, your Pantone solid coated in Corel to work effectively to work with your half tones, tints, and densities. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session.